1200 trout just, yeah. just a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago and they're beautiful John for sure so are the conditions ideal in those tanks for those fish to breed which fish any of them trout are never going to breed in the tank sturgeon will never breed catfish will probably not breed in that small of a tank so no no but they're good to raise small fish into bigger fish. Bigger fish. Gotcha. Okay. So, in fact, you can take eggs. You can take fertilized eggs, put them in there, and raise them to full size. I don't see much oxygen going through those tanks. Those are those are not. Tum uh, okay, that'll be a segue into my next conversation here, which is an interesting one. So, the last class that came through got a whole different class because they asked different questions, and one of the things they asked was oxygen right you yeah. don't see a lot of air bubbles blowing right? right max isn't using air bubblers to oxygenate his water how does this body of water right here get its oxygen it's not from bubblers what so it's just from I surface just, gas exchange right, from there around there's it. air up here there's water down there where the two interface gases exchange right. oxygen goes in co2 goes out right that's it. How That's it? how nature does things. Right. So those tumblers right there on the back, there's a, I think they're called backpack filters. Each of the black box behind each tank in there. Yeah. It sucks water up through a water pump, spins it across a little bio wheel, and it falls back into place. And that increases the surface agitation, which increases the oxygen transfer at the surface level of the water. <laughs> and I don't have it? any air pumps on my whole farm. I don't have any air stones on my whole farm. I never will have any air stones or air pumps or whistling blowers on my whole farm, okay? I don't use air to provide oxygenation. And that's something very different than everybody else. So take it for what it's worth. I'm not saying don't use air. I'm saying I don't use air. And I'll tell you why I don't use air. Um, when you talk to something any bigger than this fish tank, you start needing the air required by a, a regenerative blower. That's the ones he was talking about, Sweetwater Regenerative Blowers. Mm -hmm. They look like a turbine on the end of a motor mount. Right. Has anyone ever heard them run? Has he had one run? What do they sound like? Oh, it's like... No. no. It's like a wind turbine. Yes, yeah, the wind tunnel. It's like, yeah. As loud as I could possibly whistle is what they sound like. Line up 40 of them. I would not want to be in that whole 8-acre complex with 40 regenerative blowers. Yeah, with the plants. Neither do the, the plants. Fish, Neither yeah. does anyone that's working there. Yeah. And if everybody hates the place they're working in, the plants suffer. Yeah. That's a whole other story. The plants are very bad. But that's very true. Okay? Absolutely. If you are lovey dovey, the plants are lovey dovey. True is, true is complete. So how do you do it? How do you, yeah, how do you provide how do you the All right. So if, if this were my tank and this were my goal here, I would have another bucket right here full of gravel. Coarse, big, lumpy gravel. Rocks like that are fine. Okay? And I would have the water pump, wherever it's going from, pour into the gravel. It would just cascade down oh. and come out oxygenated. I've increased the surface area by every surface of every rock and the water's pulling air. As water's flowing down and going out, it's actually sucking air in through the rocks and out the hole with it. So that while water's coming out, if you put a little fan, you'd have air coming out too because just like that little air pump in there pulls water with it, you get a flow of something traveling in one direction, it pulls what's near it with it. So if you have water tumbling down or going through, it's pulling oxygen down with it. It's exchanging gases and it comes out saturated going into the system. Okay? That's my only aeration. In the whole entire commercial aquaponics farm, I have one acre of floating raft DWC aquaponics right now. Four acres of total area running through other wicking beds. Okay? No air pumps, no air stones, no regenerative blowers, no pumps, pipes, manifolds, valves, tuning, anything. Okay? What about evaporation when the water is flowing through those rocks and the It's much less evaporation than air bouncing water out of the tank. When you have bubble blowers, go put your face next to it. It'll get wet, completely wet. When you're springing, when the bubbles burst, they're flinging water out to the sky. Most of the water doesn't even land, it evaporates. You have less evaporation of water going in through rocks and returning to the tank than you do from bubbles blowing it out of the tank. So I see your system, and is the air in the fish tank the same as the air in the grove? Like all that... Is the DO level? Yeah. No, absolutely not. It's highest in the fish tank, okay? It's losing oxygen on its whole path thereafter, okay? And it's coming back probably pretty low, to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't have a meter. Um, and this, this, if, is there oxygen in the water? 
Can anyone tell me if there's DO in this water? Yes. 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 How do you know? Alive. Everything's alive. There's mosquitoes in there. There's algae in there. Great. If something is short of oxygen, if there's fish in there and they're short of oxygen, what do they do? Die. They die eventually, but they first they go come up to the surface to grab they air. They start gulping air off the surface. Why? They can't use air. But the surface skimmy layer, even in very low DO areas, the surface layer where gas is exchanging is actually fairly rich in oxygen. So they stick their face right up to that. And they're gulping, the, they're skimming the water off the surface in order to get water that has oxygen in it. Okay? If it gets bad enough, every single fish will be lined up facing for the sky, slurping that skimmy water off the top. And I've seen it happen a lot of times. That's a good DO meter. It means the DO's low over there. Okay? So it's not to say I don't want to get a DO motor and keep all this thing and record keep it at all and all. That's all part of my goal. But it's not necessarily necessary. I know there's oxygen in there. I know if I have flowing water going down a waterfall of rocks, I'm going to have more oxygen in there. If I don't ever have an issue, by the way, fish will go off feed with low DO. If the fish are at the bottom and they don't come up and they should be hungry, there's probably not any oxygen because fish know if they eat, they're going to produce ammonia, ammonia is going to take up oxygen, and it's going to make their bad situation worse. Fish know that. It's their environment, right? If you were stuck in a bathroom surrounded by a smorgasbord of food, but there was no way to poop, you might not want to eat your belly full of fish, of food, right? Because you are in an environment that's not going to be good if you eat too much. Fish know this. If their DO is low, they go off feed. That's a great early indicator. Fish should be hungry. They're not eating. Maybe I better check my oxygen or maybe I better increase the oxygen. Mm -hmm. All right? I can always drop in air stones if I want some more surface agitation and oxygen. That's great. But, uh, and, and somebody asked, you know, how do you know that there's enough oxygen in there? In addition to looking for the signs, I make sure it's the perfect environment for fish, which means I want a low BOD. BOD means biological oxygen demand. Rotting fish food, fish waste, slime, stuff, decay, organic matter at the bottom of the pool, all of those things rot, and when they rot, they use up oxygen, okay? Which means they are using oxygen, which means they pull it out of the water and they will literally suck the oxygen right out of the water and the fish go up, because the, the bacteria are more aggressive for the oxygen than the fish are, okay? So if you have rotting crap and crud down at the bottom of the tank, your tank will require more oxygen than if you have a clean tank full of clean water. If you can see all the way to the floor and it's spotless on the floor, there is a lower demand for oxygen. I want my fish tank spotlessly clean. I don't want a single granule on the bottom. And you've been to my place. I can take, go down, grab the finest filter I got, sweep the entire bottom for two minutes and not bring up a grain of sand. Because the design of the fish tank is such that I put the water in at a little bit of an angle. I use round tanks and it swirls. It, when you're in a swirling body of water like that, the water's moving because it's swirling, but the floor of the fish tank ain't. And you have mm. moving water on a, on a stationary surface. So if we all jump in a doughboy and we, we run in the same direction, I used to do this as a kid, okay? We run around in the same direction. Pretty soon all the water is whirlpooling. And then we turn and tackle and try to fight each other. And we're all helpless because we can't plant our feet because we're sliding backwards in the movements of water. That same principle works here. The, the crap and fish food and everything that's down there can't settle because it's moving across the surface. Now, in the dead center of the doughboy, whoever gets that lucky spot, they're turning because all the water's moving. They're turning, but they're not, they're not moving around in a circle. And because they're only turning and not moving in relation to the floor, the solids settle out right there. That's where they go. So we would clean a, an algae-filled doughboy because we didn't have chlorine or anything fancy like that. <laughs> we would have to clean the doughboy. We'd all get in there with, with brooms and we'd scrub the walls and we'd loosen up all this algae until it's all free floating in the water and the floor and we'd, we'd goof around in there until we thought we had every square inch covered with the broom. Then we run circles till it's a whirlpool, then we jump out and go play. Come back an hour later and the water would be crystal clear and all the algae would be in a little pyramid right in the middle. That's where it naturally settles. So if that's where it naturally settles in circling water, make your tanks that way. I don't know if Max covered that possibility. What's that? In this class, I, I didn't I go talked all about the it. Class. Remember I showed you yeah. the standpipe, talked about trying to turn your water any chance mm -hmm. you get, yeah. and always put the standpipe in the middle. And I even tell folks, even if you're using a flat bottomed water tank with the top cut off, if you have the ability to dig down, no, put a little, little bowl in it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And even if you don't, it still works. Yeah, you got, yeah. It works a little better if you got some downward force because gravity still pulls things down, okay? So anyway, now if you draw off the bottom center, <laughs> that's, if, if, all, if your water's coming in top on the edge and kicked at an angle, right? If I put the hose at this angle, this whole body of water is gonna start spinning. All right, so it's coming in oxygenated at the surface and turning. As it works its way down. You're gonna drop your glasses. Oh yeah. As it works its way down, okay, and then to the middle, all the solids go right there with it and it's sucked in and out. That's how you also know you're efficiently exchanging the water. It's pretty much a spiral path on its way down and then out, okay? All the solids, as they're created and get to the middle, whoop, they're gone. So I always have a self-cleaning tank. Nine months now and I've never cleaned the tank, nor will I ever clean the tank. So they 